Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, if you haven't ever joined me before, my name's Julie. My husband and I live on a half an acre. And my passion is to grow food, teach other people how to grow food, and how to preserve it. So um, today, I'm actually wanting... Sorry, I gotta put something down. I, I wanna talk to you a little bit about canning and what you would need if you want to start pressure canning. Um, I'm getting ready to do a video canning green beans, and so... In the event that I have some people who have never canned before uh, join me, I want to do a video ahead of time and let you know everything that you would need. Now, when I was a little girl, I grew up with my grandma pressure canning lots of stuff. Uh, and one of the main things she canned was green beans. And they were so delicious when she canned them. Uh, but I was always afraid to pressure can. Um, <laughs> the funny thing is, there's a episode of Lassie where they were canning and I watched it when I was a kid and the pressure canner blew up in their kitchen so I was always afraid of that. Well a couple of years ago I decided to um, go ahead and get myself a pressure canner. Actually my husband got it for me and uh, try it because I always wanted to do things that I couldn't do water bathing. Now I've water bath canned for years and years but I hadn't pressure canned until a couple of years ago and then I've gone crazy with it ever since. Um, one of my favorite things to do is to make meals in jars. I have done uh, green chili chicken, beef bourguignon, um, bourbon chicken, things that you can just open a jar, maybe make some potatoes or rice or something to go with it, or just open the jar and eat it um, in the form that it's in out of the jar. And that makes me happy. Oh, I've done barbecue and chili and different things too in that. Uh, but I like having that type of thing on my pantry shelf. So it makes life easier when you come home um, and you've been busy and you can just open a jar of something that's already prepared. And it's prepared using healthy ingredients the way you would make it yourself, not something off of a store shelf that has God only knows what in it. So anyway, so I started canning, pressure canning, and I have loved it. And it is not it is not scary. Um, I always was terrified to do it. But once you've done it, you'll say, oh, this wasn't near like what I thought. I do have a gas stove. I actually got rid of my electric stove. Um, it, has a it was a glass top stove, too. Uh, so I could get a, a gas stove because that is um, the optimal thing if you want to can. There are some glass top stoves that are rated for that. That's up to you to find out whether or not yours is um, but gas is gas is easier to regulate because it's either you know you can turn it on or off whatever but people have there's a lot of people I know that can on an electric stove so just check your stove check the the um, you know and see if your stove is actually rated for that the ratings on your stove so I, I can't speak to that because that's an individual thing so um, okay, let's get into some of the things you will need, or hopefully everything that you will need for pressure canning. First off, of course, you need the pressure canner. I have an all-American pressure canner, so that's what I'm used to using. Um, it actually, if you're going to go out and buy one, I highly recommend this. Uh, it does have the gauge on top, as you can see here. It has a pressure release valve that is just an extra built-in um, safety feature. So this will go before anything would ever explode. Um, it does slip on and twist. And so these little, uh, what you call them, they catch underneath the edge. And then you lift these up and crank them down. And I absolutely love this canner. I feel so very safe in using it. So if you're going to purchase one, they're on the pricey side. Um, once in a while you can find one on Marketplace or at a garage sale, but they get grabbed up pretty quickly because this is the top of the line canner. Okay, the next thing you're going to need, and most of them come with it, but you will never want to set your jars directly on the bottom of your canner. You will need a rack that goes in the bottom. So like I said, most of them come with it. If not, you'll need, if you, you know, find yours at a garage sale or something and you don't have this, you definitely need to purchase one because if you don't, your jars will break. So you'll want to put that in the bottom. Um, another thing that you will need are your jars, of course. Um, 
depending on what I'm canning, there's wide mouth jars and uh, there's the regular mouth mason jars. Now, I'm going to do green beans next, so I'm going to use the regular mouth mason jars. I save my wide mouth for larger items that will be harder to get in or get out of a regular mouth mason jar. But I'm going to do green beans and potatoes, and these will work great for that. You will need lids and rings. Um, all of your jars, if you buy them new, will come with lids. And I've used a lot of the regular ball lids, um, and I've had success. However, ball from a lot of the media that I see, they're not making them up to the standard they used to. So I have actually purchased four jars lids, and I love them. I've not had anything not, not uh, work out with these. These are regular mouth. I got 100 lids in the box. I will use the the regular rings that come with them but I am switching out uh, and using the four jars of lids now and I like it a lot I've used quite a few, used them quite a few times so that's up to you if you get and you have the mason lids uh, there are people who reuse their lids I never suggest reusing a lid I I save my lids that have been used and I'll use them for, you know, just to put dry herbs or something in. But when I'm pressure canning, I want brand new lids that don't have the little marks in them uh, that look like they've been, they've sealed before. I want a lid that's fresh and ready to go. Okay, another thing you will need is a funnel of some type. This will fit in your jar and help you to get your stuff in there without getting a mess all around the edge of the jar because we're going to clean our, our edges but the, keeping the jars as clean as possible is good. It's going to ensure that you have a better seal. Plus, then you don't lose stuff out. You can just get it directly into the jar. When you're pouring your hot water and stuff, it's easier to get it in. This is a must. You need this. Um, something else that is definitely a must is a jar lifter. Um, these, you can pick these up at Walmart or about anywhere. This actually would have had a black handle on it. I've used mine so much that I busted the black handle off. It still works. You don't ever want to try to pick up your jars out of your pressure canner. They are going to be so hot without one of these. You grab your jar and lift it and you can put them in or out with this. Um, and this ensures that your jar isn't going to slip out. If you try to use tongs or anything else, you're going to have a disaster and you run the risk of getting burnt. So don't try to get by without getting jar lifters. You have to have jar lifters. So you can put them in your pressure canner. Okay, another thing you're going to need is we're going to... Sometimes we cold pack. Um, I always put my lids in warm water anyway or hot water because it softens that seal around them. Um, and just get some better prepared, I think, for the canning process. There are people who don't, and they work out just fine. But even, I use this when I'm hot water canning too, but this is a magnet that will reach down in the pan where your uh, lids are, where they're hot, and you can get them out without scalding your fingers off because you need your fingers for the rest of the canning process. So um, this is great. And then the other end, which... I actually don't use this. I actually use a chopstick, but you can use a butter knife or whatever, but we're gonna need to debubble our jars down in the edge. And that's actually what this end of the tool is for. So you can go down and debubble, get the bubbles out after you've put all your stuff in your jars. Um, Cause you wanna keep that water level at the right height. And if you've got bubbles in there, large spaces that don't have any liquid in it, and you take those out, then your water level is going to go down. So we want an accurate water level on them, so this helps with that. So, okay, um, I just wanted to show them. Of course, you're going to need whatever it is you're wanting to can. In my case, this time, it's going to be green beans and potatoes. And I'm going to season them up with some garlic and some onions and some salt and pepper. So I'm looking forward to that. And there's nothing better than canned green beans, so... Anyway, get your stuff together and get ready because we're about, this is about to go down. We're going to do this and don't be afraid. Um, there are other brands of pressure canners, Presto and different things, and you're going to have to, um, you know, read your instructions. Every pressure canner comes with an instruction manual. 
so you'll need to read your instruction manual on yours. Most of them will have a rubber seal, a rubber gasket around them. You'll need to be sure that that is um, an okay seal and in working order. If they get old, they have to be replaced. So if you picked up a pressure canner from a garage sale or um, Facebook Marketplace or something, be sure that seal is good. The All American actually does not use a gasket. It is metal on metal, and so I have to take, and you can't forget this because it kind of sticks if you don't. I take oil and just run around that before I put my lid on, and that's what makes my gasket on my inside. I absolutely love this pressure canner. Um, and this will do quarts or pints. I can stack, um, I think it does eight quarts if I remember right. Yeah, eight quarts. So uh, hopefully I have eight quarts of green beans and potatoes going here. I've got my jars in the dishwasher. I like to sanitize them that way. Um, I actually run it without soap because if you've ever experienced, you know, a dishwasher usually always leaves a soap residue on. So I, if, if they're not clean, I'll run them with soap and then run them again without soap. If they are clean jars, new jars, like the ones I've got in there, I will just run them through without soap on uh, a wash cycle and then they'll be ready to go. So, and they'll be all sanitized. So anyway, get your stuff together and let's do this. Thanks for joining me, like, subscribe, and share. If you know anybody who's interested in pressure canning um, and wants to learn how, because we're gonna do this together. Thanks.